Well, Terry, you've announced it. At the end of the season, you will be retiring from playing in the Hyundai A-League for Sydney FC. How does it feel now that it's out in the open? Has it finally sunk in? Yeah, look, it's something that, that I obviously come to terms with um, a few weeks back, um, having discussions with my family and, and obviously the boss here in the, in the club as well. Um, it was just a matter of, of making the decision when to announce it to the players and to the, to the, the supporters, I suppose, if you like. Um, the important thing for, for me and the club <clears throat> was that we didn't announce it at a time where it would um, distract the players' focus from any games. And, and I think having the good victory against Wellington on, on the weekend, um, all but secured finals football for the club, and um, we thought yesterday was a good time. So, yeah, look, it's something that I've been at, at ease with for, for a while now. And, um, I'm just glad the boys can, can continue winning and, and staying in the finals. Obviously, this is nine years since your first contact with Sydney FC. Just going back to those days, do you remember how it all came about? Yeah, look, that was back in, in 2005. Um, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife and, and mother of my three children, um, is Australian. Um, and then I wanted to return home to Australia. And the Hyundai A League was just starting. Um, all the clubs were recruiting players um, and I just basically sent a, an email to all the A-League clubs and, and asked for a trial. Um, Sydney FC was the only club that replied to me and offered me a two-week trial. Um, and thankfully, as you said, that was nine years ago now and thankfully I've been here ever since. So when you came over, you obviously met Pierre Lebarski, Stevie Corrigan would have been here, Dwight York. What was it like going into that first training session here, knowing you had two weeks to impress? Yeah, look, it was pretty pretty daunting, to be honest. Um, I was playing in the conference in, in England, and, um, and back in them days, we didn't train here at McCoy, we trained at Park Lee, um, and they got some little accommodation there. And Myself and nine other trialists was, was staying there. Um, and on the morning of the, the first day of the trial, Steve Corica and uh, Steve Laurie who was the, the first two players to arrive at the training ground. And I remember sitting on the balcony of, of my accommodation um, having a cup of tea and, and both of them turned up in Porsches. Um, and I sort of thought I was completely out of my depth here and I was wasting my time. But um, thankfully, when we got on the, the training park, um, you know, thankfully the boys were very welcoming. Uh, to myself and all the other trialists and, and we got on with what we, we needed to do for the next two weeks. And then how did it happen that you were the successful one, I suppose, out of those 11 trialists? Um, after the, the first week, I think there were six or seven um, of the trialists left, myself and a, a couple of other boys um, was asked to stay on. Um, and then David Carney arrived um, midway through the second week um, and he got signed pretty quickly. Um, so I knew there was only two spots available. Um, later in that week, Matthew Bingley came in and signed for the club. So there was myself and three other trialists that was left to, um, for Pierre and, and Ian Crook to decide on. Um, and thankfully, um, they decided on myself. How did that feel, knowing that you were the successful one and knowing that you had a career in professional football in Australia? Yeah, look, it was a, it was a wonderful feeling, um, obviously, to to see the way the club was, was being run and to see the way um, the team was, was coming together. I knew that we were going to be successful and that team was going to win that year. And it was something that I really wanted to be a part of. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really thankful that, that that contract eventuated and like I say, nine years later, I'm still here. Obviously, throughout the nine years, you, you played with some people here at Sydney FC, some characters, uh, the likes of Dwight York, Mark Rudin. Tell me a little bit about these. These people. We'll start with Dwight. How 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 well did you get on with Dwight? Yeah, I got on fantastically well with Dwight. Um, we were actually in Dubai on a pre-season tour, um, pre-season camp when we got the news that Dwight was signing. So that was a you know great news for us as a football club and for for us as players to have someone who's won you know the treble in in England, won the Champions League, won numerous premierships. Um, so yeah, it was it was great to have him joined the club. I remember the day that he he signed, we trained at the football stadium and uh, we got presented to him and he was he was everything that we thought he was and more. Um, he was very um, confident, um, he was very, very sharply dressed um, as he always did and maintains, I'm sure he still does now, but um, 
He was one of the most dedicated professionals that I've ever played with. Um, the way he trained day in, day out, his approach to training um, and his approach to games and just the, the willingness he had to help everyone around him. Um, he was a wonderful character. I mentioned him just before, Mark Rudin. Does he like to play with? And yeah, Mark, Mark, was, Mark was very good to, to play with. Um, he was the captain of the club when, when I signed, um, himself and David Zulic. And, you know, like I say, everyone in that, in that first year, we shared a, a real bond together. And we travelled all over the world together. Um, we went to Tahiti, Dubai, Japan. Um, so, yeah, look, you know, it's, it's wonderful, as I said before, witnessing groups of people come together and, and work behind one, one common purpose. And when that, that comes off, um, you know, it's a wonderful feeling. Alex Brosk, one of Sydney FC's all-time greatest strikers. Yeah. What was he like to play in with? Alex is a very, very special character. Um, I roomed with Alex at the club for four and a half years. Um, he's one of my closest friends. Um, so he's, what he's done with his, his talent, taking it all over the world, playing in various countries, playing for the Socceroos. Um, again, it was just a, an honour and a privilege to to play on the same team as him, um, to sit beside him here in the in the dressing room, and like I say, I roomed with him for four and a half years, so I know basically everything about the boy. <laughs> Any of the guys that you played with who you're still particularly close to and have heard from in the last few days? Yeah, look, it's as I said before that when you create them bonds with people and you play in teams with people, it's it's very special. Um, it's actually really hard to put into words and. Um, you know, Ivan Nechevsky, who's still here now, he's been here for seven years, is, is one of my closest friends as well. And, but yeah, look, uh, particularly yesterday, um, I was getting phone calls and, and text messages and emails from, from nearly all the boys that I've played with um, in the past. Ian Fife rang me from, from Iran yesterday. Um, so it was, it was good to, to speak to, to Fife again. And Andrew Packer, who's now up in um, Queensland, he's in the services, he's in the army. He gave me a call yesterday and, you know, like I say, Alex Brosk and Mark Rudin. And, um, yeah, just all genuine, genuine people that, um, like I say, I'm very proud to, to have in my life. When you joined in that first year, did you expect that you'd still be here and be the only player in the high under A League in this season who has never played for another club? Um, I always hoped I would, David. Um, you know, it's well documented that the day I signed for Sydney, I, I said I would never, I never wanted to play for anyone else professionally after Sydney FC, and I knew to to make my career a long one, I'd have to work very hard to stay at, at Sydney FC, and that's what I've tried to do day in day out. Um, that's what that's what I've I've applied myself to, and that's the professionalism that if I can leave any sort of mark on the place in, in terms of that, I think it's um, can show how to you can turn a limit limit on your talent um, into a career um, and into a longevity and something that you can look back and be proud of. I know you once played with John O'Shea, is that correct? And yeah. Peter Crouch as well? Over in yeah, like I say, I've, I've played football professionally for 17 years and, and when you do that um, in the football world, it's a small world. Um, people think it's a, it's a big, um, fast moving world, but it's not. Everyone knows everyone and everyone um, mixes in the same circle, so I've been very, very fortunate to meet some wonderful people. Um, like I say, I've, I've made lifelong friends at Sydney FC that I'm very proud to, to say are my friends and, and will be in my life forever. And Like you say, I've got numerous other um, acquaintances that I've met through the game, and Peter Crouch is, is one of them, and Trevor Sinclair, and um, yeah, lots and lots of different people. And um, So yeah, look, I'm, I'm very, very thankful to the game of football for the life that it's given me and my family. Um, I'm very thankful to Sydney FC for reinvigorating that love and that opportunity in 2005. Um, and I'm very pleased and, and satisfied and very, very proud that I can now look back and you know, I can show my kids the, the DVDs of when the, the old man used to play. <laughs>